Hello again, and welcome to another Felix Stone Phone Forge video. I'm Ian, and before we go any further, uh, I've got a sort of channel announcement to make. The frequency of the videos is going to tail off a little bit because, as I mentioned in the last video I did, chronologically, I've uh, just started a new mental health nursing degree, and even in the first two weeks, the workload is vicious. Uh, and later on in the course there are full-time placements involving working nights, odd shifts and things like that, so I'm just not going to be able to do as many videos. Uh, for those of you who know that I also run an Etsy shop, I am going to have to temporarily put that on hold because I've got like six orders to finish and I'm spending 45, 50 hours a week learning. So that's going to have to go on hold. Not permanently, but just until things sort down a bit. Anyway, with the bad news out of the way, let's talk about the good news. What are we going to do today? I have never owned a rough cut. I've been doing this for coming up for four years and I have never owned a rough cut. If you've watched the video on the X Shot uh, Vigilante, you'll, you'll know that I was quite taken with the idea of a shotgun. And the Vigilante is fine if you mod it properly in it, you know, you turn it into a proper shotgun. I saw this on Facebook Marketplace and I thought, this is a really popular blaster and I don't have one. Why haven't I got one? What are they good for? good for that. That's really cool. I mean, I can see why these are popular now. This is a fantastic, fantastic close range, and you put a lot of darts out quickly, secondary. But there is a problem with it. And the problem is, <clears throat> it breaks if you put bigger springs in it. And the reason it does that is because of the internal mechanism and because it's got gears in. I know it's got gears in. If you look down there, you can see them. So I'm going to mod this and I'm going to do that and we are going to see if we can get this to take bigger springs. I think, judging by the size of the plunger tubes there, and I know it's got two plunger tubes because it's got two. There's one and there's the other. Priming indicators, so it's got two plunger tubes, two plungers. And that's why it's got gears in, because for a small child, that's actually quite a stiff pipe. So it's got gears to give you a mechanical advantage. Now, I haven't watched any of the other videos on this, because I don't want to be uh, pre-disposed, pre-prejudiced as to what I'm going to do. I know Captain Xavier did one with a, a rear prime, a direct prime, and I know Walcom S7 did one with a rather cool mare's leg, a lever action. I haven't got a sling for her to cut up, but even if I did, I wouldn't, because in this case I want it pump. I'm going to see if I can keep it pump. I may not, but we are going to see. I'm going to get the camera back to the workbench, open this up, and we shall see what everything looks like. So, onwards. Right, we got the screws out, so let's open this up and see what we've got inside. Okay, we've got usual tack rails. There's the trigger, which... Yep, that's obviously the catch. And this bit up here looks to be the reason that you get uh, a chance to fire each barrel separately. Okay, let's take this apart. We'll put these in the bits box because we don't need those. And we'll just release the trigger a little bit because I don't want that flying off anywhere and if you've watched enough of these you'll know that springs always go flying okay up here we obviously have our smart AR system which is ha, and there's oh, all this is actually one piece that's nice okay let's okay so what we've got is there's, there's our plunger bar, this white piece here, this is really nicely lubed up inside, oh right that just comes off, well that'll get glued in, right, that's, we don't want that for the moment, okay, there we got our plungers, springs, what I'm going to do I think is take the springs out and see if we can get a, a stress free 
way of how this works. How do these come off? How does that come off? All right, I can do that, and I can do that. Great. Uh, just screw in the back. Okay. Uh, one with a tab. This plunger rod has got a tab on that side, so that fits in there. Okay, so one with a tab goes in there. Oh, that just lifts out. Okay. That's a fairly reasonable size spring, and there's a fair amount of space in there. We certainly could be able to get another spring in there. So let's see if, how we get them off. Oh, they just come off. That's good. That's good to know. That is good to know. What sort of strength are these springs? Bog standard. Bog standard. That one's got the tab. That goes on the right. Okay. Yep. This one has not got the tab. And that goes on the left. Okay. Whoops. And we'll mount this back in here because it will help. Oh, take the tactical rail out. Put those over here. Right, so let's see. Let's see what happens. Now that, that fits in there, and that bit fits in there. Okay, that's cool. And the whole caboodle goes back in there. Okay. That goes in there. And fits in those holes there. Okay, so I'll do this without the, that spring on for the moment, because otherwise I will lose that. Okay, so I think I can inadvertently engage one of the locks. Yeah, I must have done. Doubtless, all will be clearer in a minute. Right, let's just free this. And see what's causing that to lock up. I suspect, you know, but this lock is the reason things break. Now you could bypass all this. There we go. All right, so that's. I might want to keep that. No, no. Okay, I'll put that back in there. Back in there. Put the, put the trigger back in there get all this back in and then we can see how this actually works because I don't have the faintest idea right okay it's got slam fire so right this goes back there you can see the gears moving they're engaged there and then that goes forward right so and then we have to fire, and these have to go all the way forward, and on that side, that has to trip that lock, or not. Why isn't that tripping that lock? I don't know, but it hasn't. Oh yes it has. So, all the way back, all the way forward. And then we can't move this until we fire, and that goes back there. Well, I'll tell you what, it might be possible, because I do want to keep this. Whoops. I 
I do want to keep this pump mechanism because I think it's more is that the right way on? Yep. More fun than having a direct prime. And I want to keep this, but we've got to get rid of all this, so uh, how far is our prime? Okay. Moving this about four inches, so yeah. The only way to do it would be to run a connecting bar. If you take this gear out and then run a connecting bar from here to here, that might work. That might like that and then let's mark this up let's get a pen let's get a sharpie so if I put a connecting bar say here up to say there and then run this back oh, trigger the lock no because that's going to go too far the only other way I think we can do that is going to involve me pretty much taking an awful lot of this out. On the other hand, what I did want to keep was the uh, ability to fire two shots, so I can press that. If I put a priming bar through here, I can do that and I've still got the ability to fire separately. It's not going to be great because I'm going to lose the functionality of the front pump grip. But taking all this out of here, I'm going to lose the support for this and I'm going to have to carve this out. So what I think I'm going to do is probably just double up these springs, put a priming bar on there. Don't know what that's going to be yet. We shall find out. Shall hunt in the bits box and uh, disconnect. Disconnect that. I should just take one of those out. I mean, this runs on a roller here, so I can leave that now. I can just take that out. That's what I'm going to do. I'll take that out. I'll do that now so you can see what this looks like on the inside. And so I can see what it looks like on the inside. I suppose I could put a lever action on it. I could take a bit of shell cutting. Let's have a look anyway. Ah. It's clipped in. Is this clipped in? Yeah, it's one on the bottom. Okay. If I take that out. Actually, I think I'm going to take that small one out because that this will give positive engagement to this because I still want to keep this just so I can keep the primer bar in the right, the pump grip in the right place. Okay, so that goes on there. That goes on there. This will still run. All good. All good. Okay. Uh, now, I am going to have to do a bit of shell cutting. I'm going to have to cut some then around about here where the oh where this went is that the right bit upside down 
the right bit? No. Is it that bit? Yeah, this has got to be the right bit. So I'm going to have to cut a hole about here, possibly through that uh, screw post. But that's all right. And then we can just do that. Ah, slam fire. Okay, there's our slam fire mechanism. The trigger, let's have a look. Get that in there. That's it. The trigger does not actually act on the, the sear, the catch, the spring catch, the catch. What happens is when this is all the way forwards, like that, then it goes our lock. This little priming bar, this slam fire bar is all the way forward, or it would be if I can get it. Come here. Yep. And then you pull the trigger back, and that acts on this piece here on the prime, on the slam fire bar, which pushes that down. I'm going to keep that just for the sake of simplicity. So that runs in there. That runs on there. And this sits here and does that. Yep. Okay. Right, that's good. We can we can stay with that. Fine. So, oh, I just drop. Oh, a little nylon washer. Anyway, I'm going to screw this back up, and then we are going to see about this. I'm going to have a rummage, see what I can find to do that with, and show it to you. Don't go away. Okay, it's a couple of hours later and we've got the usual chaotic mess on my workbench. As you can see, I've killed a couple of night finders. Uh, well, one of them, that one's still one piece. That one isn't. Uh, I've been hacking springs apart. I try to find something that would fit. The problem with the rough cut is that the springs are not standard retaliator so you know the size of springs you get on a retaliator an alpha trooper and all that they are ever so slightly wider and they're a bit shorter and if you try and put uh, a full length retaliator spring now i thought they might for the pre-compression it will pop out of these little holes which is a bastard but there you go so uh what i've put in here in the end Stock spring and a cut down Alpha Trooper Retaliator Retaloid spring. I don't know what uh, what we're going to get out of that, but we shall see. So there's our plunger tube assembly. Uh, I had a couple of ideas for this. I did think about putting a big vertical bolt up there and having it run as a bolt action top prime, but that is going to really provide a lot of the longer the bolt in here is yeah the more torque there is on the plastic holding it in place and the more likely it is to break so i've just gone with a rampage uh priming bar with some temporary bits at the back to make it not horribly painful to prime i've cut where's that go that should go in there slot there so this primes which now means I've got to trip the lock because it just went bush and that won't retract I did think about taking that out but it does give you a nice bear in mind I want this to function like a bolt so pull back push forward and I want it locked until it's fired to make sure that everything is uh, an engagement anyway so that's that uh, We've got some dead uh, bits here. Anyway, I'm going to put this together now and see what we will get. Uh, it's going to be quite difficult to pr to uh, right that. that goes in there, and this side can just. Rotate around, and the lock went in again. 
So we've probably got all told maybe five, six kilograms of spring in there. Uh, it's going to be quite a tight prime, I feel. But we will have a go. We will have a look and uh, see what we'll get. This is obviously just a sort of development thing. I might do something different with this. I might not. It depends, you know, for my own personal use blasters, I'm not overly fussed too much about the aesthetics, you know. If you've watched any of these videos, you'll know that one of my favourite sayings is no one ever called the AK-47 pretty. And yet it is deniably effective. Undeniably effective, in fact. And that, whoops, and there goes another tactical row of spring. Right. <clears throat> I can see where that one's gone, so don't go away. I've got to pick that up now before I lose it forever. You'd think, wouldn't you, having a black carpet? <sighs> Would make finding springs easy. But you'd be wrong. You would be wrong. Okay. I think that's everything. What do we Oh, yes. This, because we do want the pump grip still on there. Or do we? Do we want the pump grip on there? There's going to be a dirty great hole in the bottom if we don't. What do you think, people? Still have that on there? It's going to flop about a bit, isn't it? Hmm. I think I will. I think I will. If it flops about and becomes too annoying, I can always just check that. Yep, yeah, that's good. That's actually why I wanted the lock in here. Because if this isn't all the way forward, the slam fire bar isn't all the way forward, and the trigger mechanism won't work. So let's button that up and see if it will A catch and B work. Right, I shall uh, do the screws and get right back to you. Okay, it's finished. We've got, I need to put a little bit of thread lock on the primer grip, but that's sort of a, that's sort of a work in progress. I don't want a ring flopping about. I don't want a floppy ring. Uh, I should probably put some thread lock on there. Or maybe, you know, put a piece of plastic on it, I don't know. Uh, Anyway, I haven't bothered putting the, the pump grip on just yet because I want to finish. Okay, uh, it cocks, it gets compression. We've got two stock springs, one of which is cut down slightly in each plunger tube. So uh, I'm not expecting this to uh, break any FPS records. But stock, these things get 60. And okay, it's a short range shotgun and you don't expect anything particularly astonishing out of it. But it would be nice to get high performance because even at short range, it's hard at the duck. So, let's see what we get. I'm going to put my uh, money where my mouth is now. I am going to put that grip back on because, hang on a minute, I've had an idea. If I put that grip on there, I could run a bar from there to there, couldn't I? I could just drill a hole in there, put an aluminium bar on there, aluminium bar on there. Direct pump. Ha! That is going to look as ugly as all bloody sin, though. I'm going to have to bend the bars and I'll end up... And I'll tell you what else I'm going to have, end up with. I'm going to end up, oops, if I can get this on again, come around this bloody thing go, that way. I'm going to end up with a big mass of this in my face. Not sure. I'll think about that. Anyway, let's prime it. It's about 10k prime, so you notice it. It does, however, fire one dart at a time. If I can get it off. I'm being so cautious I'm not actually shooting the thing. 
So that's good. But it will fly two at once. I'm quite happy with that. I'm just gotta go and pick some darts up. So I think we can safely say that the objective of the exercise has been achieved more or less. We have got increased performance, you can see that. Uh, we've kept the slam fire, we have kept the slam fire, we have. Observe. Which is good. So we've got slam fire, we've got single shot, we've got double shot. And we've got increased performance. Uh, parts used, two stock uh, retaliator or similar springs cut down a bit, and uh, a Raider priming bar. And everybody should buy a Raider at some point if you can find one. Why? Because they come with 35 round drums. And it's worth spending the money on a drum and getting a free Raider. This isn't uh, perfect. Might need padding with some uh, foam. Anyway, I'm now going to uh, put some darts through this and we'll try and get some FPS. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Where's the chrono gone? Chrono! Right. I get quite into this. Okay, let's see what we're going to get. Let's turn it on. Let's see. Uh, nice and straight. 88. Bear in mind this was doing 60 beforehand. 60. Which even for Elite is a bit... Eighty-three. Do you know, return spring might not be a bad idea. One more. Make sure we're not going to hit the sides. That was eighty-one. Maybe that eighty-eight was a fluke. Maybe the dart was just a perfect fit. You know how it goes sometimes. I've certainly added 20 FPS, almost 30 in fact, if we go with a high one. Is that straight? Yep. 81. So I reckon, I reckon we're hitting, yeah, anywhere between 80 and 90 FPS, depending on, so let me get that really straight. Nah. Okay, somewhere between 80 and 90 FPS, which for a shotgun isn't bad, and I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. This bit does need some thread lock. <clears throat> uh, yeah, let's say we've got an extra, well, almost 50% performance if you think about it. This was getting 60, it's almost getting 90. Not all the time, but you know. Things happen. It's also bloody damp here. That means the foam's expanding. So humidity and dampness does play an effect on performance. So any springs. Uh, we've kept the uh, firing two, firing one barrel at a time. We've kept the ability to fire both barrels at a time, and we've kept the ability to slam fire. So all things considered, I'm pretty happy with that. I am now going to go away and watch what. Uh, uh, Captain Xavier and Walcom did to theirs, and depending on what I see, I will put some comments in the uh, little title screen afterwards. Thank you for watching. Like I say, things are a bit mental at the moment, so the frequency of videos, if you're a casual watcher, this probably doesn't mean anything, but if you're a subscriber, please bear with me. I am going to keep doing these, but the frequency of the videos is going to drop. I, I got up at 6 o'clock this morning, and I rewrote notes from last week's uh, lectures until 12 <clears throat> and then I did this and it is now getting late and I need to do something purely relaxing. Uh, probably play with this for a bit and unfortunately the shop on Etsy is going to have to go on hold for a bit because 
I just ain't got the time, you know. If I get three orders in a week and someone says, you know, could you do bloody bloody blah, blah, and I'm like, yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to. I really like modding things, uh, especially with the things I wouldn't normally do. And people were like, yeah, that's good. And they give me a chance to do it, and they pay me a little bit for doing it. So hopefully things will settle down, I'll get that open, get that opened up again. But anyway, I'm going to put some thread look on this, put a pump grip back on, go and find all those darts, and then... Uh, Watch a couple of videos and see what uh, what Captain Zavi did. I will say one thing. I do know one thing. It will be better than this. But then he has been doing it for a lot longer. Okay, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you've got something from that. Uh, comments in the comment section. If you like the channel, subscribe. Uh, if you don't, tell me why not. Thank you.